Now they say in geopolitics, there can be no black and white. These binaries do not really work. They stop us from seeing the world for what it often is, complex, nuanced, and full of all the shades in between. So sometimes you have to take tough decisions and act in self-interest, which is what most countries do most of the times. Case in point, India's strategy in Myanmar, a neighbor that has been in turmoil since February this year. It's been 11 months the Myanmar army launched a coup. They toppled Aung San Suu Kyi. They seized power. In these 11 months, we've done countless reports on the situation in Myanmar, on the protests, on the detentions, on the killings, the dialogues for peace, the calls for restoration of democracy, all of it. But the military junta remains unmoved. It has not responded well to international pressure. The West has made democracy the sole prism of its policy on Myanmar. It has imposed sanctions, cut off financial assistance, and closed channels of communication. Unfortunately, India cannot do that. India shares a 1,700-kilometer border with Myanmar, a porous border prone to insurgency and militancy. As many as six separatist outfits have camps here. In the past, they've attacked India's security forces from their bases in Myanmar. So India's relationship with Myanmar has a clear security dimension. Simply put, India is not spoiled for choice here. It doesn't have many options. It cannot afford another difficult neighbor. It has to engage with whoever is in power in Myanmar. So earlier this week, India made its first outreach. India's Foreign Secretary, Dr. Harshvardhan Shingla, visited Myanmar's capital, Naypyito. This was the first visit by an Indian official since the coup. What for? To emphasize on the need to return to democracy. That's what the Ministry of External Affairs says. To push for the release of all political prisoners, to call for dialogue, and a quote-unquote complete cessation of all forms of violence. This is what India is pushing for. It was a two-day visit. The Indian Foreign Secretary met military generals, political parties, and members of civil society. The most important meeting was with this man, the chairman of Myanmar's State Administration Council, Senior General Min Ong Lang, the man who led the coup. Foreign Secretary Shingla also met with leaders of the National League for Democracy, that's Aung San Suu Kyi's party. Reports say he sought a meeting with Suu Kyi herself, but the military denied that request. India also offered a gift of one million vaccine shots. What do you make of these engagements? Is India legitimizing the military regime? Or just keeping channels of communication open? What does being committed to democracy but also engaging with dictators really mean? A one word answer is pragmatism. Given India's unique security challenges, it's important to play the cards well. Remember, last month there was an ambush on the India Myanmar border. In the state of Manipur, a paramilitary convoy was attacked. Five people were killed. The attackers were two insurgent groups the People's Liberation Army of Manipur and the Manipur Naga People's Front. They took responsibility for the attack, and all evidence suggests they were operating from camps based in Myanmar. And that's part one of the problem, insurgent groups. Part two is drugs. Earlier this month, there was a drug haul in Manipur. Drugs worth 500 crore rupees along with 54 kilograms of brown sugar and 154 kilograms of meth. They were all seized from a Burmese trafficker. So there's terrorism and there's narco-terrorism and then there's China. It is investing heavily in Myanmar selling weapons, building trade corridors, launching infra projects, pulling the military junta into its corner. So what does India do when there's a coup? Western sanctions are not working. Western threats are definitely not working. Slamming the junta in Myanmar is easy, but it's a losing strategy. Engaging them while pushing for the restoration of democracy, well, that's tough. But all things considered, that's India's best bet. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.